Everyone made fun of me. I was teased every day. I felt like no one liked me. But now, I feel like I belong. I feel more confident. I'm Claire Teachin. Bullied, but not broken. Hi, I'm Claire Teachin with Bullied Not Broken, and I have an exciting interview with Mike Seneca. He's a NASCAR driver, and I love fast cars. I just love them. Mike Seneca. Why did you pick um, racing as a career? Well, I, I think that racing is a, a team sport, which I like that a lot. Um, I'm just fascinated with, you know, when kind of like man and machine versus the other man and machine and uh, the technology that goes into the sport. Uh, every day you learn something new in the business. So I like the fact that our team is a very cohesive unit. We, you know, we don't win as a, you know, the driver just doesn't win the race. The whole team does. Um, the sponsor, you know, gets something out of it. We all put something forward. So it's kind of like building a house. What you got to do is you got to build the foundation, and that's like finding the sponsorship. And then you have that, and you all of a sudden you get, you know, you find a team, you know, and you kind of have to build that to be successful. Like, you know, with, with Jimmy Johnson and that dynasty at Hendrick, you know, they didn't start from scratch. They, they, they pretty much started from scratch and built up what they have to be like an empire today because him and Chad Canals work so well with each other. That's important. So it's more like, more like the team sport is what I appreciate about it. Do you still race to this day? Yes. Yeah, I still race. I, in fact, we're getting ready for um, Richmond next weekend. I'll be in the uh, NASCAR K&N race, which will be on Thursday night. And then I, I, I go back and forth to the trucks, the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. So we go from there. And next year we're going to dive in. We're going to do, do some Xfinity racing next year, the old Nationwide Series. Wow, that's very interesting. Um, you just told me a little bit ago that you wrestled professionally. Um, what kind of like was it? High school, middle school, college? It was actually uh, professional wrestling. Uh, I was uh, after I'm a pilot by trade. I fly airplanes, and after 9/11 occurred, um, my my buddy. I was working out one day in the gym, and. Uh, my buddy who had worked for ECW in Philadelphia, he had asked me, he was like, well, what are you going to do now? I Initially, I got hired by an airline to fly for them, but in 9-11, they cut back all the hiring. So I had to think of plan B. So I was working out with my buddy Ron, and he said, oh, you should, you should try out to become a professional wrestler. I was like, well, I, you know, I watched the WWE, and I never really thought about mm -hmm. it. So... I, uh, I decided to give it a go, and um, I was trained by The Rock's uncle in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Uh, your father might remember the Wild Samoans from the, like, the 1970s. So that's The Rock's uncle, and the first day I went to the training center to meet with Afa. The Rock was in the ring, you know, because SmackDown was in Philadelphia the night before, and I'm like, oh wow, there's The Rock, you know, that's really cool. And my first stage name, was Mike Flight. So we were we after training, after I met Alpha, and I signed all the paperwork to start training there. We all went to Wood, uh, Woody's Pizzeria, which is in Allentown. So The Rock was sitting across from me. It was I'll never forget this day. And he had asked me what I did for a living. I said, Well, I'm a pilot. I said, You know, I, I was supposed to work for an airline, but they they stopped they stopped hiring. So we're talking about it. And, you know, I was kind of like, I started my training in South Jersey with Larry Sharp at the Monster Factory. But Larry had gotten sick, so he sent a bunch of us up to Allentown to complete our training. So that's how I met The Rock, and I'll never forget it. We were sitting there, and The Rock was sitting across from me. He was eating pizza, and he goes, um, he snapped his finger, he goes, I got a great gimmick for you. He goes, you're going to be Mike Flight. He goes, the cocky airline pilot that it's never been done before. I'm going to tell Vince about this. I'm like, oh, okay. I thought he was kidding. I'm like, yeah, okay, all right. Then two weeks later, I got a, I got a, uh, uh, off of Pops, the Wild Smoke. He pulled me in his office and they wanted me to work a, a dark match 
in Philadelphia. I was like, oh, okay. A dark match is like 60% of the lighting in the house is on. I'm not, it's, not, it's not a live television show. It's a match that's just seen by the fans falling into the arena. So I did that, and yeah, that's how it started. Cool. Thank you. How fast do you drive? Uh, the fastest I've been is uh, probably about 191 miles an hour. Uh, it's, it's, so it's kind of, I know, right? It's like, but, you know, I just feel very comfortable going fast. Um, I like uh, living on the edge like that, but I think that when the car is in control and the car is set up really great, the balance is good. Um, you know, just everything works together. The car, it's not too tight. It's not too loose. Um, you can feel it driving into the corner. And I'll tell you, I can tell you if a car is tight or loose because these are things that you learn in racing where I, I have to go back to my, to my pit and tell my, my crew chief what's going on. Hey, the car's a little snug, which means tight means like when you go into a turn, right? The car doesn't really want to turn. It kind of wants to stay, the wheel wants to stay neutral and you gotta have that, that tight feeling. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they have, to, they have to free up the rear a little bit. So they'll go in and they free up the rear which causes, you know, kind of like more downforce in the front and less in the rear. So that's kind of like 191 miles an hour. I, I'm sorry, I go off on a tangent, I'm sorry. That's, no, that's very interesting. I'm a fast person too, which I love to go fast in cars and boats and practically anything, so. Look out, here you go. You, you'll be in NASCAR soon, right? <laughs> I hope so. Here you go, that's what I want to hear, absolutely. If I can help you out, let me know. Can you tell me your bully story? Sure. Um, when I was younger, I was like, like I mentioned earlier, um, I went to a, a school called Yanami Junior High School, and uh, I really wasn't a, I wasn't a big kid. I was kind of a little bit like I mean I was kind of a little bit overweight a little bit not not really a lot but um, I I didn't play really play any sports so then I, I said well let, let me try soccer and I tried soccer out. And I really wasn't very good at it, I'm not going to lie. But I tried it, and I was like, all right. You know, it seemed to me like it just I wasn't fitting in. So I think I kind of did it for the peer pressure. You know, I kind of wanted to fit in with everybody. So I did that, but I still really wasn't accepted yet. So kids were kind of like pushing me around. They would take my lunch money, and, you know, I mean, I, I, I would let them do it too, unfortunately. And So one day I was talking to my father. He was like, well, you, you've got to fight them back because that's how it is. And I'm like, no, I'm not much of a fighter. But I kind of let it go and let it fester. So then one time, I got, I'll never forget, I got off the bus and I used to walk down a really big hill to go home. Well, I remember I ran down the hill and the one kid tackled me. I was like, wow, and he beat me up. And I got up and I ran again and another kid that's it. So it's kind of like I got beat up like five times on the way home. And the, that day I was just, I had enough of it. So I started taking karate. I figured, you know what? I need to defend myself if something happens. But it was tough because, again, now you have to confront somebody when they went So I was like confronting like 10 different people that didn't like me. So, but that's kind of how it started. And I guess someone just didn't like the way I looked. You know, I, I mean, maybe like I said, my hair was wrong. I did it, my, the shirt I was wearing. They just, the people, bullies will find something because you know, to me, I think they're insecure. That's what it is. And they got to pick on you because they're insecure. How did it affect your childhood being bullied in your childhood? Well, I'll tell you, I used to look for shortcuts. What I mean by that is like, I would, if I could find an easier way to go home, I would, instead of riding the bus. Um, because I think that I didn't really want to face these kids. So sometimes I would stay late after school and have my mother or father pick me up and I would just hang out in the library. So just stuff that I, I would be able to kind of like avoid the bullies, if you will. But, um, Again, like I said, it's tough because you can't hang out to the library until 5.30, 6 o'clock at a junior high school. So the, the latest I could hang out was like 4.30, and I'm like, oh. So I had to wait outside for my mother to come get me, like when she got done work at 5.30. Um, but you kinda, I kind of took shortcuts not to confront the bullies. So I kind of appeased them is what I did. But I, in, in, in the long term, I was hurting myself. So. Do you have any advice for bully kids? That's a really good question. I, yeah, my, my advice would be, you know what? Be yourself and be proud of who you are. Because you know what? You only get one life, okay? And you make the best of it. Um, 
running away is not going to help it. It's not going to help you. You know, it, 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 you might think it helps, but it doesn't. Um, I say always, you know, be yourself, you know, be proud of who you are. Be proud of, you know, be comfortable in your skin. Because, again, life is precious. And I think a lot of people take that for granted. So I would definitely say, you know, just be yourself. Don't don't, don't let people inhibit you or, or make you, any, you know, feel less than, any less than what you, you, know, you, think you think you are. I think people have a tendency of trying to do that. And again, I think bullies are insecure with themselves. So they try to pick on other people. What should we do about it? Like if me and you teamed up and we had a, a hundred ideas flowing in our head, what would we, first thing, what would we do about it? I think the biggest thing, that's a great question. I think the biggest thing is taking to social media and become an advocacy of, of uh, anti-bullying. I know that, um, you know, racing is a great platform, player, and, and that's one thing I'd say. We've thought about that in the past. Stop the bullying, stop the antagonizing. Um, I'm not a kid, so again, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm sure you, you look at it differently than I do, but having gone through bullying, it was, very, it was a very uncomfortable time in my life. Um, so I would say definitely, so let's take the social media, let's spread the word about it, let's you know, create some sort of a, uh, a hashtag, you know, and kind of keep that filtering. And my sponsors would be more than happy to help out with that because our Bell Plantation, the PB2, they're very pro-military because uh, the owners were, were in the military. So we do a lot with the military. And I talked to a young man about a year ago who told me he was bullied in high school. So he joined the Marine Corps. And he goes, it made him fly. So now he goes, you know what? I say to my friends, you know, they say, oh, well, you know, what are you doing? You're working at the corner store? And he's like, no, I'm in the Marine Corps. I travel the world. I see the world. What are you doing? And he's like, well, I still live in our city, you know. But he was like, he joined the Marine Corps because he wanted to, you know, get out of that, that environment. So to me, I think that's, that's important. you got to go out there. you got to be, you know, be proactive about it and get on social media. You've got to sometimes. Good answer. That's the same thing as we basically did. I would love to, like, if I got older, I would move to California or just get a way to have a clean, fresh start. Just be in somewhere peaceful, happy, no stress, no drama, all of that stuff. Yeah, and that's, and that's a great thing. My name is Mike Seneca, and I support Bullied Not Broken.